like I have said in the past, I only do videos on Silent Hill when I feel I have something new and exciting to offer. This is in part because I'm most well known on the internet for my Silent Hill analyses. When I put out a Silent Hill video, I want it to be an event of sorts. I want it to be of the highest quality, so my name can continue to be positively associated with the Silent Hill brand. Luckily, I managed to find a new angle for the series that I felt was worth investigating. One of the most recognizable symbols from the Silent Hill series is the Halo of the Sun. This is the signature symbol of Silent Hill's underground cult, known as the Order. Within this symbol are several awesome references to things inside and outside of the game. References that, once again, demonstrate the abundance of thought and care that went into the creation of Silent Hill's mythology. With this video, I will address and attempt to explain everything about this symbol. I figured that because there is no source on the internet, either in text or video, that attempts to explain every aspect of this symbol, I might as well provide it. I promise that even the most die-hard fans of Silent Hill will find one or two things in this video that they did not know about this symbol before. In regards to the Halo of the Sun, there are things that we know for sure, things that are likely, and things that we can rationally speculate about. I will make sure to accurately and openly label what is fact and what is speculation as we go along. We will start with what we know for certain. Like the Order of Silent Hill, the Halo of the Sun is an amalgamation of different religious and cultural influences. Both the Order and the Halo use these influences to exemplify their own themes much like, say, the Gnostics used Christian imagery to create their own myths. The first example I'd like to provide of this mixture of different influences is the runic language that we see in the corners of the Outer Circle. We know what these runic characters spell. They are from an old Hungarian alphabet called Rovashirash. This was the alphabet used before the Latin alphabet was adopted. Nobody knows why this alphabet was used by Keichiro Toyama, but there is reason to believe that he used it simply because it looks cool. I will get to why that is in a moment. Anyways, the bottom right runic text translates to Alessa. The bottom left translates to Dahlia. The top left translates to Incubus. Not sure why there is an A between the B and the S when there should be a U. I think it's reasonable to assume that this is just a mistranslation from Japanese to English. Finally, the runes in the top right translate to a leaser. Now who is a leaser? There's no character in the Silent Hill franchise that goes by that name. Due to the lack of information regarding a leaser, we can only speculate. I think it makes thematic sense to view a leaser as Alessa's other half, that being Cheryl slash Heather. Think about it. Cheryl was the name given to Alessa's other half by her adopted parents, Harry Mason and his wife. Who is to say that Cheryl is her quote-unquote actual name? Others might suggest that Eliezer is the demonic side of Alessa that we encounter in Silent Hill 3. Either way, I think it's safe to assume that Eliezer is some sort of reference to Alessa because it makes thematic sense. It also might make practical sense due to another aspect of the Halo, but we'll get to that in a moment. The runes spelling out the names of the Silent Hill characters are not the only references to Ravashirash on the Halo. These three symbols are not characters from the Ravashirash alphabet, but are commonly written alongside Ravashirash characters to signify certain sounds. The beetle symbol signifies the sound tpr. The tree-looking symbol signifies the sound Tepus, and that symbol signifies the sound Om. Now, what do these symbols mean exactly? There are two possibilities. On the one hand, there's a strong possibility that, like I said before, Toyama used these symbols just because they looked cool. What's my evidence for this? Even scholars of Ravashirash don't even know what these symbols mean. The best information I could discover came from this website, which theorizes that these symbols are used to address a specific person. 
You know when you write a letter, you usually write to so-and-so at the beginning? That's what the symbol supposedly represents. But again, even Ravashrash scholars will say that that is just speculation. That's why I think there's a strong possibility that the symbols mean nothing. However, there is a second possibility that might, might, give two of these symbols meaning. Though these symbols are ripped from Ravashirash, their similarity to other symbols might have motivated Toyama to use them inside the halo. For instance, this symbol looks a lot like the neo-pagan symbol for the triple moon goddess. Both the goddess and the symbol represent fertility, which is appropriate given the fact that the Order is trying to impregnate Alessa with God. The two crescent moons on either side of the full moon could also represent the two sides of Alessa reunifying for the ritual at the end of Silent Hill 1. But I will admit, that's just my projection. But also, the use of a beetle symbol might be related to another goddess, one from Egyptian tradition. The goddess Kepri not only was a goddess of creation and rebirth, but also a goddess that represented the sun. These two elements, birth and the sun, work well alongside the triple moon, and the fact that they are situated on a sigil called the Halo of the Sun. This wouldn't be the only time that Silent Hill references Egyptian mythology, as the Egyptian Ankh is an item you can obtain towards the end of Silent Hill 1. That said, I want you to keep in mind that this is all just speculation. So, the only things we know for certain about the Halo of the Sun is that these are Ravashirash characters. Now we move on to things that are not confirmed, but are very likely. I will start with these tiny symbols surrounding the inner circle. As I have said in a past video, these are most likely references to symbols from alchemy. Though I was not able to identify the majority of the symbols, a significant portion of them do look similar to the alchemical symbols for tin, wax, beeswax, lime, take, and magnesium. Granted, these symbols could easily reference something else. Like I said with the previously mentioned Robashirash symbols, they could signify multiple things, a fact that we will see again later on in this video. I lean towards these symbols being alchemical in origin, given Silent Hill 1's numerous references to alchemy. If you want a full list of these references, please refer to Reinstall Paul's series on Silent Hill 1, which I will link in the description box below. Speaking of Reinstall Paul, now is a good time to bring up some of the research he has done into the Halo of the Sun. He might have figured out not only what these three circles mean, but also what this little squiggle at the bottom of the sigil means. No joke. So as we know, the god of Silent Hill, Incubus, was modeled after the pagan deity known as Baphomet. The design of Baphomet was done by the 19th century French occultist, Eliphas Levy. Paul thought it would be a good idea to research the major works of Levy to see if anything else carried over to Silent Hill's mythology. In Levy's book, Transcendental Magic, he discovered two very interesting things. First, he noticed this sigil, called the Goetic Circle of Black Evocations and Pacts. Notice the four names towards the outside of the sigil and the three circles in the middle. Before you shrug off the similarities between the Goetic Circle and the Halo of the Sun, consider the Goetic Circle's function. Its purpose is to summon a deity, namely the Devil. Of the many instructions one must follow in order to bring the Devil to Earth, two of them are especially notable. One is to have a sorcerer and their two assistants stand inside the three circles. The other is to offer the skin of an immolated victim a sacrificial tribute. As we know, part of Alessa's torture at the hands of her mother and the Order was immolation. At the end of Silent Hill 1, Alessa's immolated body is present at the ceremony which preceded the birthing of God. Notice the three participants as well. I think it's reasonable to assume that the sorcerer here would be Dahlia, and her two assistants are Alessa and Eliezer, or the other half of Alessa. To seal the deal on the Goetic Circle's relation to the Halo of the Sun, I will now address the squiggle at the bottom of the Halo. Paul found a drawing very similar to the squiggle in Levy's aforementioned text. 
Note the similarities as I highlight them. According to Levy, this signature belongs to one of the many princes of hell. Though I was unable to find a similar demonic signature to the squiggle on the right side of the halo, I think it is reasonable to infer that this is also a demonic signature. As for who these two demons are, maybe one of them is supposed to signify Incubus. Maybe one of them signifies Valtiel, but we do not know for sure. By the way, if you like this explanation, please click on the link to Paul's Silent Hill 3 series in the description box. Everything regarding the three circles and the signature comes from those videos. All of that is Paul's work, not mine. Therefore, I think he deserves some support. So please go leave him a like and a comment. Finally, we get to the parts of the sigil where we can only reasonably speculate. The eye at the top of the sigil is theorized by most to be the Eye of Providence, or the All-Seeing Eye of God. I think that's the best guess that we have so far given the halo's function in summoning God. Then there's the scales on the left side of the sigil. Scales are one of many symbols for the astrological sign of Libra. This is important because we see the symbol for Libra at the bottom of the sigil. As for why both these references to Libra are there, I don't know. It's roughly just as possible that the bottom symbol is a reference to alchemy because the same symbol is used to refer to the alchemical process of sublimation. Once again, we face the same problem that we had with the Ravashrash symbols. They could mean one thing, or they can mean many things. We don't know. The symbol at the top of the halo is theorized by some to be a Degas rune, also from the Ravashrash alphabet. Although notice that the rune is inverted, looking more like an hourglass. The symbol at the far right appears to be the mathematical symbol for pi, which represents the ratio of any circumference of a circle to the diameter of that circle. Aside from the fact that the halo of the sun is a circle, I have no idea why pi is there. Then there's the wavy lines on the left that I have absolutely no idea about, nor why the scales appear to be balancing the wavy lines with pi. Maybe because they're on opposite sides of the halo, and the scale is trying to balance the opposites? This would fit in well with the fact that the Degas rune also symbolizes the balancing of opposites, but who knows? And then there's this symbol in the middle. The Silent Hill wiki says that this is the king's crown, the king in question supposedly being the king of our world, God. As for how this conclusion was made, I do not know. If somebody can help explain this symbol or the wavy lines to me, that would be great, because those are the only two things that I am legitimately stumped on. That is all the information I was able to glean about the Halo of the Sun. I hope this serves as a good resource for my fellow Silent Hill fans. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a like. It's free and helps me out a ton. If you have any suggestions for future Silent Hill content, please leave them in the comment section below. Hell, maybe your suggestion will encourage me to return to these games a whole lot sooner. Finally, if you like the type of in-depth analysis that I do on this channel, please consider supporting me on Patreon or Subscribestar. I will leave a link to both in the description box below. Until next time, just remember as always and as per usual, stay yellow.